Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on Plots TV Africa. Our final conversation today is about the state of the nation. And we've invited a public affairs analyst, Mr. Victor Hay. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning and thank you for having me. All right. Now, where do you think the confusion regarding restructuring is? Would you say this is because it means different things to different people? Yes, it does mean different things to different people. Um, Whereas some would look at restructuring as um, something physical, others look at it as, as, as uh, fiscal, that is financial. Um, but in the main, the clamoring at different times has been because of the state of the nation at different times. Um, whereas at a point in time, especially when the Niger Delta militants were you know, agitating for restructuring, their concern at the time was more physical, more financial, more fiscal, more financial, because it felt that there was some sort of imbalance, you know, uh, in the way that, you know, the resources of the country were being allocated. They felt that they were not being fairly treated, being, uh, if you like, the main source of uh, income for the country. Uh, at this time, the reason for for it, although there's the there's the issue of inequity as well in the way people are treated, like what is happening in Biafra and the rest, it is more about security because people feel threatened. So at different times, when people are asking for a country to be restructured, a lot of it is dependent on how you know uh, how aggrieved they feel at the point in time and how badly the field treated. So if you ask me, everything really and truly boils down to leadership. It's just a cry for leadership. Because the truth is, if the country is prospering, if there's equity, if there's justice, if people are getting what they want and they're not being, they don't feel marginalized or unfairly treated, uh, I mean, no one really bothers about whether Nigeria is divided or whether, you know, so restructuring is another word for, is another cry for equity. All right, Mr. Mr. Okai, do, do you think um, that we can have a successful and a flourishing Nigeria um, if we had good leadership? Or do you believe that it's also very important that some of the ideas concerning restructuring are actually looked into? If you, look, if you lis listen to the resolutions from the 2014 confab you know and of course the arguments concerning um you know power sharing the arguments concerning a regionalization um and also you know being able to remove some or certain items from the uh, um, legislative uh, executive list and some of all of that um would all those things be solved if we simply just had better leadership or do we truly need nigeria to be restructured in a certain way for it to flourish? The thing is that uh, I bring it out to leadership because where there's leadership, there's equity and there's justice. Uh, equity means no one will be cheated, everyone will be fairly treated. Justice means you will get what you, you truly deserve which means no one will be able to, um, I mean, no one area will oppress the other. So, and it takes a leader who is willing to implement this. If a leader is not willing to implement this, you can split Nigeria into a hundred regions. Even in the state, you still find inequity and injustice. If you divide Nigeria today, even in the component part, people will still begin to argue for restructuring. I told you that for me, what restructuring means is simply a cry for justice and equity. So it still boils down to leadership. So all of these issues will be addressed under the right leadership. If you don't have good leadership, no one is going to address the issue of injustice. No one is going to address the issue of inequity. Right. Um, well, I, I was just going to quickly also throw in the conversation from the papers this morning. Uh, the president is currently under fire. According to the Daily Sun, it says Afeni Fere, Pandef, uh, NEF and others uh, attacked the president over his position on restructuring. 
Um, and, you know, it has been, you know, something that has been going on for a long time. If you re remember the campaign period, uh, the current administration had promised that they were going to take restructuring seriously and, you know, very likely restructure the country. But they seem to have changed, um, you know, their position on that. Uh, quickly also react to, to that. Well, truth is, if you are discerning, nothing has changed. The president never made any promises. Uh, speech writers made promises, okay? Uh, people who were not going to be on the driver's seat made the promises. Uh, you know, that's the problem when people want to write what they think people want to hear. That's what happened during the campaign. And Nigerians were not discerning. You know, the president was, has always been consistent, if you ask me. You know, he has never, he has never promised any of those things. Yes, the VP may have, but he's not the president. You may say he's in the president, but he's not the president. Speech writers were busy writing what they thought Nigerians wanted to hear. And that is the problem, which is why when you're picking leaders, it's important to look at their pedigree. It's important to hear what they have said when they were not looking for power. It's important to read their body language. Because at that age, it's difficult to change a man. Their minds are set. And that's what Nigerians are suffering today. Mr. Ohel, um, last question from me. Um, last week, Friday, I spoke to the leader of Afeni Ferry, Pai Ayo Adibanjo, who's been clamoring for restructuring. And he, he dropped some bombshells in that interview, and one of which is that um, he said that if Nigeria is not restructured before, you know, the next elections, that, you know, Nigeria was not going to be together. He talked about the president's fulanization agenda. Paaya Adibanjo also um, went on to say that the key, you know, to Nigeria's unity would be a constitution review, saying that the current constitution we have um, was a military creation and that we need a new one. Do you agree? Well, uh, I've been in the same space with him before. The last election, they made the same threat. Uh, that if there was no restructuring, there would be no election. All, for me, all that is blowing hot. The best way to deal with this is to call your representatives at the National Assembly. Begin to talk to them. Call your governors and get their buy-in. If they do not buy in, no matter what hot air you blew, it will just remain that hot air. To say there will not be an election is just blowing hot air. I've seen it. They threatened all that before 2019. I was a candidate in the last election. I was a presidential candidate. And I, I was in the same space with people who were threatening, oh, there's no restructuring, there's no... All of that is just hot air. They're just talking. Nothing will come out of it. The only way to make things happen is to get the buy-in of your National Assembly members, to get the buy-in of your governors. They must look at Nigeria first and not their political parties. If they consider the interest of this nation and not the interest of their political parties or their own selfish interests, then perhaps there will be hope for us. But unless that happens, I mean, if you say there will be no election, you say what you say, party members will go out there and vote. Are you going to tell the party members not to go? They will go out there and vote. The governors will mobilize their people. The National Assembly will mobilize their people. So who is in your constituency? That's the problem. So there are people, is either we start getting the right people to go and represent us, or we start converting the people who are representing us and hope that they can buy into, you know, what we're saying. Perhaps the security situation in the, in the country is beginning to make people rethink, you know, no longer strictly along party lines, but more along you know, some you might say regional lines or along survival lines. All right, All right Mr. Okai, I think uh, we hear your points and uh, I would just hope that everything, any decision taken is for the unity and interest of Nigeria. Um, thank you very much and have a great day. Thank you for having me. So yes, that's uh, where we close the show today. Um, Monday, June the 21st, 2021. I am Annetta. Felix. And I am Osaogi Ogbon. Remember to catch up on any of these conversations that you may have missed um, on our social media platforms, and that's uh, Facebook and Instagram and our YouTube uh, page also, all at Plus TV Africa. See you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.